Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. And welcome to another episode of one of the darkest TV shows ever made in the UK, Fat Families. Oh my God. First of all, how are you doing lovelies? How are you? Welcome to all the brand new viewers that this series has brought into the Chanel. I hope you're enjoying the content. Feel free to binge it. No. I was a little bit apprehensive about posting about something like Fat Families because as someone who's on a weight loss journey myself, I've explained in previous videos, you can go back and watch them if you really want to see. I didn't know if my mental fortitude was going to be strong enough to subject myself, ah, beat, to subject myself to these sorts of shows again, but there's something about Fat Family specifically that is so... What's the word? Disgusting! Audacious? Audacious, is that the word? It has a lot of audacity to be like, oh my God, Mr. and Mrs. Massive Fatty. Mr. and Mrs. Massive Fatty. Like it kind of takes the content beyond normal, like diet and exercise and healthcare TV show into like, almost satirical parody nonsense because it's so far beyond the line of what we would think is acceptable to say to strangers that you just kind of go, how was this made? Like it kind of disarms me in a way because I'm like, obviously this is just completely obscene. Insanity girls. <coughs> But that doesn't take away from the fact that this show has damaged people's relationships with food and also damaged people's relationships with their own body, whilst also trying to, in a way, frame it as entertainment. And I mean, if you look at it through the lens of how batshit bonkers was that, it is kind of entertaining, I guess. One of the things from the last episode that I kind of didn't really pick up until some of the comments pointed it out was that the host and narrator, they are in fact one and the same, would be lovely to these people's face and then actually backstage in the narration part be scathing. Massive fatty. And the guy from the last episode, in fact, turned to the host and said, I'm so glad I really feel like I've made a friend. And then in the narration, the host was like, <laughs> I do kind of feel like a level of deviancy is afoot here. Deception and deviancy, my loves. What is that? It's the end of. So my lovelies, if you don't know me, my name is Luxaria. Oh, am I being visited by heavenly light? This was, oh, oh dear. In order to see the light, one must risk the dark. My name is Luxaria, I have a biochemistry degree and I've been a makeup artist for 16 years. So I know a thing or two about the ever-changing landscape of the beauty world. With that being said, my lovelies, welcome to the Chanel. Would you like a top comment from the last episode? I think I would. And that is by Cloud in Boots. And they say, where is the husband giving three words that describe himself? What about rating himself on a scale of male attractiveness? Where is the husband's large tower? This poor woman. I'm so glad her husband is there to support her. I completely agree. I think also this show has a level of misogyny in it that we haven't really seen in other shows quite as insidious as this. Oh, I don't know. We have watched Bridal Plasty and the Swan here, so. They're more overt. This is kind of like leads you into thinking certain things rather than overtly saying it, shall we say. But that's enough of my prattling on, my lovelies. Are you ready to watch this episode today? Volume two, one might say, of Fat Families Girl. Grab yourself a beverage. Make sure you're sitting down comfortably. Pop in your little ohanger right into your little... I was gonna say family hole, but we're not doing that. Disgusting! Pop your ohhanger right into your little scandal hole. And let's watch Sky One's Fat Families from 2000 and what, 10? Watch out, fat families. Right, here we go. It's time to get off your wobbly bums and melt that lard. I'm Steve Miller, no nonsense fat buster. Yeah, but also this host. So the reason why this host managed to lose a lot of weight through his own journey is because he had surgical intervention. A lot of the people on this show don't have the luxury of surgical intervention. So in other words, she gets a gastric band, she thinks she's someone. <gasps> I'm Steve Miller, no nonsense fat buster. I'm here yeah. to Look stop at your the obesity oh, epidemic that is sweeping the UK. Oh my God. One massive family at a time. Imagine being this, these actors. Ooh. Punch that pie, girl. Da 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 da. My God, it's a fat family. Is that really necessary? 
can't believe I've done this. <laughs> I'm in Telford, Shropshire, and I'm about right. to meet one of the fattest families I've met in my life. This trundling trio are grazing their way to an early grave. Watch out, massive fatties. The lard police are in town. <laughs> Okay, all right. First of all, honestly, you'd think this was like an onion headline by the way he's just said that. Sorry, what kind of, what was that? The Lard Police? No. Right, I'm sorry, what? The Lard Police of Shropshire? What was These that? These families I've met in my life. This trundling trio are grazing their way to an early grave. Trundling Watch out, massive tree. fatties. The Lard Police are in town. Meet Tanya Cook. She's the picture of health, and along with husband Mike, they live an active life. Oh my God, hang on a second. Hang on one finger licking second, girlies, because in the last episode we saw them do that Photoshop like expand tool as like a joke. Is that what we're seeing here again? I believe I am psychic. Because he's like setting us up to believe like, oh, these athletic ladies are on the game. They live an active life. Right. Grandparents Anne and Les are fighting fit. And kids Ben and Jacob complete the picture. Ben and Jerry's. But in reality, right, they look like this. The three fattest cuffs weigh a whopping 77 stone between them. Was that needed? Was that needed? Also, someone clearly went, Child, shake that like you just don't know! We're not making children shaking jokes, that's unacceptable. I, like, why? Why did they play the balloon expanding sound? This is the thing, this show is not really made for people who want to see a successful weight loss journey and kind of almost empathise with that situation if they find themselves in a similar situation and think, Oh, this is a great example. Maybe I can make some, you know, better quality of life choices for myself and my family. That's not what this show is, is it, my lovelies? That show is, look at these, what was it? Trundling trios grazing towards lard police. I just don't know anymore. Right, 77 Tanya stone. Tanya and Mike have asked for urgent help in losing weight. They've asked for help, this trio okay. This devour up to three times as much food as they need. Oh, I really don't like the food POV point of view. If anything, this show makes, like, the concept of eating actually quite disgusting. And there's a little secret. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, my love. Shall I let you in on a little secret? I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, my lovelies. But we need to eat to live. And if we make eating disgusting, there's going to be a problem there, isn't there, my lovelies? Yes. God, right, OK. Are you ready for POV hole? <laughs> in a single sitting. Food in our house is probably an extra member of the family. Right. If they don't stop gobbling up giant portions and cutting out the junk, they will be six feet under before... Oh, repulsion. Absolute repulsion. The thing is, as someone... I need to move oh, they this. know it. I've always been a... I'm really sorry, but that is purposefully made to look disgusting and disorientating. That's why those POV, like, on the fork cameras have a fisheye lens so that everything looks even more dramatic and rounded than it ever has done before. I think in that sort of a situation, you could put anyone eating anything in, like, a POV situation and I would have the same, like, repulsion of just, like, I don't really like to see that, you know? I don't want to see, like, food entering a hole, really, you know? I mean, even when people are like, I've just finished cooking, let's try it. Oh, I'm still a bit like, mm, I've just watched you eat. Don't know about that. Gosh, am I gonna unveil some problems that I have with mastication? Right, okay, I'm sorry, Mike. Was it Mike? We'll be Greg. six feet under before they know it. No, stop talking about death. I've always been a big person. Okay. I've always been chubby. <laughs> These cuffs just love to be stuffed, but there's a special reason why Tanya weighs a ton. Oh, did they need to speed that up to make her amusing? This is the thing, a lot of British TV, in fact, a lot of British humour has always been at the expense of others. I think maybe other places around the world can sort of sympathise with this as well. A lot of our comedy shows use body type as like a punchline. So as a trans person, this has been my story for a long, 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 long time. And you might say, yes, but they take the piss out of everyone. But that's not the point. The point is you're actively ridiculing potential addiction. And is that ever a good look? No. 
No one starts out in life thinking, I'm going to put myself in the most unhealthy position possible for myself, my family, my mental health, my body. No one starts like this. It's things that happen to us that we end up carrying forward, such as trauma. Or quite often, perhaps some of us, maybe quite a lot of us in fact, have neurodivergent symptoms of something which haven't been addressed or haven't been discovered yet. And they lead to us self-medicating in a way that leads to other issues, such as food addiction. And even then it might not even be food addiction, it might be one specific thing, like sugar, sugar addiction. I'm convinced that every single person in the Western world has an addiction to sugar, me included, because it's pumped in every single thing we can get. If you go into the supermarket, it's basically a sugar factory, isn't it? Let's be honest. I'm starving. Right. If I do look in the mirror, I like what I see. I can stand there naked and like what I see. Okay. I love my big body. Okay. Oh, right, why are we playing, like, this music? In fact, she loves her body so much, she posts pictures of herself on the internet. <laughs> Imagine, oh, that's definitely the title. That shows you how old this show is. She loves her body so much, she posts pictures of herself on the internet. Who nowadays doesn't post pictures of themselves on the internet at any point in their life? Does that mean we all love ourselves? No. She's got a point. Bonkers, bonk diddly onkers, girl. Was that, what was that for? Hang on, was that a case of like, she thinks she's someone, doesn't she? She posts pictures on the internet. Is that like an inferring that she's like on the game? Tanya, Mike and Anne have been chewing right. through a monumental 15,000 calories per day. Okay. That's enough that to feed half high. a football team. Is Larger it? than life Tanya tips the scales Tanya. at the Titanic 33. Tips the scales of the Titanic? What? Larger than life Tanya tips the scales at the Titanic 33 stone. This is the thing. Everything is about like puns and shaming. There's no level of like delicate care taken towards someone who's perhaps, you know, she says that she loves her body. So I can't really like judge her personal situation at all, really. I'm not qualified to. I'm just giving my reaction and my commentary on a show that I'm seeing. When you use phrases like larger than life, pun, 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 large woman, it's not inviting to the conversation, is it? It's kind of excluding from the conversation. That's a frightening 22 stone overweight. Okay, right. I'm that... scared that I've crossed that line now where you've become not just fat, you've become one of them freakishly fat people. The type of people that you see in the beds on the television. Oh dear. And they've got too fat to get up. 40 year old Mike clocks up. I'm not gonna lie though, there is definitely a, uh, what's, how am I gonna say this? There's a relationship between yourself and your body that is at risk if you allow addictive personality traits to run wild without having self-reflection and the willpower to back that up and whatever else treatment plans that you may or may not need in order to achieve things, in order to achieve like a, a weight goal, you are gonna start to see detrimental effects to the health, not only with overeating, but also undereating. There's also a plethora of other problems you can have through not having the correct diet for your body. One for me that I never really knew when I was growing up was that I am in fact lactose intolerant. Yet growing up in the UK in the 90s with a very working class family, everything we had was like very dairy heavy. You got to have your big glass of milk in the morning or at night or you got milk on your cereal, milky, milky, milky milk. Oh my god. God. And no wonder why I used to feel so sick all the time. But no one knew any better. We didn't know the word intolerance back then because industry made so much money. It was just like, no, this is what you do, yeah. Large glass of milk, calcium, yeah. It's what you need, grow. I don't want that. I'm just saying that when we see someone who is in this situation, who wants to make better choices for their life, instead of exclusion from conversations, they need to be invited into those conversations. And remember that they are in fact human. 24 stone, which is double what he should weigh. Okay. Anne is 56 years old and a worrying 22 stone. The more you get inactive, the more you're not moving around, then you get into a rut and it's like eating everything. Yeah. I've been I'm there. Steve Miller, full-time motivator and former fatty turned fat buster. Right. The family have asked for my straight-talking style of I don't help. need all these eating shots. I've got I don't to want know to see exactly what's going on. 
Step one of my plan is to spend a whole day with this tubby tribe. I need to see just what stuff makes up a cup. Right, okay. Too much time sat on their fat bums, that's their problem. Plain and simple. If they don't pull out their chubby fingers, they'll be on the way to an early grave. Watch out, Cuffs, enough is enough. My goodness me. Okay, well, that's she's, she's a no-nonsense gastric band advocator. The fact that he said, oh, they're on their lazy backsides or something. Like, it's been pretty much proven that you can't outrun a bad diet. A machine runs on the fuel that you put into that machine. More than people moving more in terms of weight reduction, calories in, calories out need to be addressed, shall we say. Yeah, addressed? That seems like a bit of a harsh word. Not addressed, but considered. As I said before, everything in consideration, not moderation. If I want to eat a tub of ice cream, I can eat a tub of ice cream. I'm not going to hold myself guilty for that, but I just know that I can't eat a whole tub of ice cream every hour on the hour for the rest of my life. All right, here we go. Hello. Good evening. You Good must morning. be Jakey. Good morning. Oh. How are you doing? Come in. Jacob shows me... Ah, I have seen that clip before on the internet and he opens that door and goes, Hey, fatty. Hey, fatty. Good morning. I didn't realise I'd been sold a lie. Okay. 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 Don't believe everything you see on the internet, my loves. Morning. How are you doing? Come in. Jacob please, shows please me in. to the garden to be introduced to Tanya, husband Mike, and her mum Anne for the very first time. Right, and he's going to be Let on his best behaviour. How much weight do you want to lose then? Right, I like being fat. I've always said it. I love being fat. I like what I see in the mirror. But I'm not unrealistic. You know, you can be too fat to live. And I think I kind of cross that line now. Okay, okay. I do think there is conversations to be had around the body positive movement. It is positive to have a body. It is delusion to assume that every single thing you do to that body is beneficial. And that doesn't just relate to weight. That can relate to other harmful compulsions, shall we say. For example, people that get addicted to plastic surgery. That is not something I think the body positive movement is beneficial for. What we absolutely should not do is ridicule people. Ridiculing does not change anything. Just like shaming people doesn't change anything. The family are planning a trip to Florida like in 10 therapy. weeks time. Oh, they're going to Florida. With a fortnight of walking around theme parks ahead of them, uh -huh. I want to find out how important losing weight is for their holiday. Okay. Can I ask you 10 all? weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks. Are we gonna have any meaningful healthcare achieved in 10 weeks? That's an awfully short amount of time. For context, I've been on my weight management journey since 2019. It is now 2024 and I'm still not quite there yet. Almost, I'm on the last little home stretch now. Almost. Definitely not achieved in 10 weeks. Bonkers. Another unrealistic health thing. What are they, <laughs> right, how is he, how is he gonna, how, how, how? Losing weight is for their holiday. Can I ask you all, does weight, losing weight link to Florida in any way? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I'd love to be under 30 stone before I went to Florida. I need right. to be up and moving a lot more than I am now. To me, it'd be nice to lose a couple of stone when we get on that plane so I can pull that tray down and eat my meals properly. Before I can take Dizzy action, rascal girls. Okay, so, so far we're not seeing a large amount of delusion. Do you know what I mean? In one of the last episodes we saw um, a guy, it was in, what was it? It was in Super Size versus Super Skinny. We saw a guy saying that like eating fruit is not a meal. That is a level of delusion that I think, you know, perhaps more education needs to be around like what is considered food and what is considered a meal. Here we have an example of someone just simply saying, I'm not unrealistic, I want to lose some weight so I can better enjoy my holiday. That is not a delusional sentence. Need to see just what they are putting into their oversized bodies. Oh my God, so head isn't it funny? So anyone from the US or anything here who watches me who's not from the UK, Tesco is one of our giant supermarkets, like um, Walgreens, no, like Walmart or Costco or something, well, maybe not quite like Costco because Costco is membership only. British supermarkets, like the big ones, that are sort of outside of city centres always have this very specific kind of architecture. They almost look a little bit like town centres. If you see, we've got like a clock tower with a clock on. It says Tesco. We've got like roofs that look like British house roofs. But this is all built to look like this. It's basically all plastic. This isn't, this is purpose built. It's not something that looked like this, then they converted it. It's, I don't know why they do this. It's probably some sort of like psychological thing of being like, oh yes, it's our heritage. Yeah, British heritage, Tesco. Just like the village in the old days. To the supermarket with Tanya and Mike. Right, here we go. 
Tanya okay. has got so big that she needs a mobility scooter just to get around. OK, that's sad. That's right. I have to go over here. I need these. To me, though, it's a case of one of these things of, like, someone doesn't get themselves into a situation like this without other things happening. And if you don't somehow uncover or help discover the root causes of something, everything else is going to be treating symptoms. And treating symptoms does not create better quality of life for anyone. A lot of the problems that I was experiencing when I was at my heaviest was I was eating a powerlifter's diet. I was dating a powerlifter at the time. I was in a less than acceptable living situation, shall I say. I had a lot of stress from university as well. And I was a few years into my hormone therapy for taking estrogen. All of these things running wild by themselves without any input of me going, hang on a second, I really need to consider what is happening to my body led me to being in an unhealthy situation. But once again, just saying stop eating crisps is not going to fix any of those situations. I had undiagnosed ADHD. How was not eating crisps going to be able to solve that? It's not. I've got to. This particular aisle bit right there behind Michael is my problem. So it's there you go. It's so problem. Yeah. It's so packet. I'll eat any one of those packets at once. Okay. And I can't help it. Look at all this. I can't help it. I can't help it. Doesn't that sound like someone who's not consciously deciding to eat that substance or to eat that junk food, as we would say? You know, there really is something to be said about like addiction to processed foods. I bet we haven't even really begun to uncover exactly how addictive some of these processed foods are or some of the processes that these foods go through. I don't know what goes into the manufacturing of absolute like pennies junk food, do you? Unless you're in the industry. Why would you? Whereas I feel like it should be free knowledge to understand exactly what you want to put in your body, but it's not because of like trade secrets, industry secrets, blah, 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 secret recipe. Bread, crisps, chocolate, biscuits. It's never ended. Biscuit. Apparently we're having a party, the crisp party this afternoon. Yeah. A crisp party. Oh, look, oh, back when we had cashiers and, and not self-checkout everywhere. That woman is so fat, she can't even walk around. The that woman is so fat. No, I'm not sure. The streets coming, you wouldn't you, with all I'm this? That woman is so fat, she can't even walk around the shop. She's actually trapped in a body of lard. They need to change, and they need to change now. It blows my mind why they eat this rubbish. Again. It's not just about the eating though, is it? There's clearly something else going on here. Anyone who's like completely t neurotypical, completely not, who gets to decide what they want to eat, who gets to decide what they want to be able to like do that day. Those sorts of people don't usually develop what one might consider extreme health conditions of habit, should we say. It's always something else going on, always something else going on. And it's, these shows never treat that. Right. Bonkers. After that hard exercise at the shops, the Cuffs Bonkers. decide to take me for their favourite chow down at the local all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. Oh, I, I personally, I do hate an all-you-can-eat. I don't know what it is. Something about an all-you-can-eat really makes me go like, no, no. I think it's because it's like not glam. I don't know. It's one of those things that like promotes you to make bad choices. Difficult. As soon as you put monetary value on like everyday essentials like food, there's always like a level of exploitation around that that can always be like, I don't know, like built upon. I'm really struggling to find my like words from the ether today to be able to quite accurately describe the thoughts that I'm having to everyone. <laughs> I'm not really woman. into duck. I like duck, but I find it quite greasy. Oh. She said, hardly no more. How often do you have a Chinese buffet? Then? How often do you? Do? Oh God, easily at least once a week. Yeah. This kind of Chinese cuisine is amongst the fattiest kind of food you can eat, at around 1,400 calories per serving. Goodness. And I will say, a lot of like takeaways and buffets in the UK. When you hear someone say like a Chinese takeaway, it's not like you would assume food is like in China, it is a British version of that food. And quite often that is literally like deep fried, caked in batter, caked in all the things that are designed for mouthfeel and not for like body feeling. Do you know what I mean? One plateful should be more than enough for anyone, but these guys are just getting started. Because it's addictive. It's full of sugar and full of fat and your body will go, oh yes, fill me up, girls. Have you noticed it's all about seconds? Two plates down, I wonder how many more to go. Right, okay. Will you have a dessert? 
Of course I will. <laughs> With 2,000 calories in Chinese cuisine wolfed down, is next that a stop, chocolate fountain? the chocolate fountain. This is the thing though, all you can eat really promote overeating. That's the point, all you can eat. We really enjoy that. <laughs> I really like this. With all that food under our belts, I am fit to pop. Is that I wonder what's in store for me chocolate? now. A walk yeah. in the park would be nice. What should we do then? Goodness, <sighs> what an unflattering angle. More food. Ben! All right, bubs. Do me a favour. Another packet of discos. Yeah. The big bag of ten. Yeah. That's the bag I want. Don't bring me a little individual bag. Bring me the big bag, babes. Okay. Business as usual. This one. That's the very fellow. Business as usual. He is a bastard. What are you going to eat all them? Normally, as a roll, yeah. With Tanya emptying up to 10 packets of Chris in a single sitting, that's at least 1,500 calories that added a to lot. a daily quota. Oh, dear. It was, yeah. Big teddy lady videos on the internet. You give me a pack of cakes, darling. A pack of eggs? Any type cakes? Uh, okay. And then he wants a raspberry turnover, my killer one, too. You seem really well trained, your son. Oh, Turn over that raspberry. Family. Cake after cake, in they go. When will they stop? Nobody knows. But by late afternoon, when bellies are full, the truth comes to light. Right. The more bored you get and the more down you're getting, and the more that you think nothing's happening, you just eat and eat and eat. And I would say I've put on free stone over the last 10 weeks. I don't know, maybe it's like a death wish thing. Does that sound like a mentally stable woman? No! <laughs> That sounds like there's something else going on. I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but that's what it sounds like to me as somebody who has lived through situations like this. I am not a doctor. I'm not a professional psychotherapist. I'm not a, I don't know, a, a cashier at Tesco. Cancelled! I'm just trying to relate this to an experience that I have had so that I can empathize with understanding how people end up in the situations they do. What's that mean? Oh. No, it's not fun, is it? <sighs> Nobody wants to cry on television. <laughs> We're almost seeing two different sides of a very similar coin here. The coin itself is like perhaps food addiction and both sides, this side of this lady here, I think this is the uh, mum, isn't it? She's clearly very distressed about the situation, whereas the other lady seems a little bit more like vivacious about the situation. Two very different branches of the same tree. Just goes to show you life is different for everyone. Everyone's journey is, looks different. No two people are the same. We can see patterns, but patterns are quite often symptoms. With Anne feeling calmer, I pop upstairs to see Tanya whose obesity is so out of hand she now requires breathing apparatus to sleep at night. Interestingly, if so do like strong men. more than a night or two without this, I'm crabby right back to where I've started. Right. It was all right being fat and breathless, or fat with something else, but things are breaking down. And I'm like, that's like, what's going to happen soon if I'm not walking very far? And things are hurting, so I'll stop walking. It's not too Frightened many. that it's all going to give up before I get there. So... Oh, yeah. I can't help it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe my thing earlier. Maybe there's an extra level of even more story to Tanya. Maybe she feels like she has to say certain things that she might not necessarily believe in, that she might not necessarily believe in in order to make herself feel defended and feel a bit better. <laughs> oh. Again, she's not... There's, there's not really a level of delusion in, in here, you know? Like everything she's saying, sometimes it's harder to act on knowing what's right. And quite often there's something standing in the way of that, whatever that looks like. <sighs> what a day. This family, they eat too much because they're bored and because they're eating too much, I don't much, think boredom is they're the unhappy. thing. But if I have to move mountains to help them, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
Okay, that's the first like sensible thing you've said that's not just been like, ha 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 ha. It comes to, down to the question of like, is it the chicken or the egg, isn't it? It's like, do you overeat because you're unhappy or are you unhappy because you overeat? The answer is it's more complicated than that. As humans, we always try and find the most simplest answer, black and white to something. Quite often the whole world is shades of gray and not even gray, every single color you can think of and every single argument therein lies. More complicated, definitely not. Oh, tick the box, done. Right, oh god. After the punch my cake. I've spent a whole day with the right. cubs eating what they eat. Yes. Masses and doing what they do, nothing. Right. But now it's time for this fat family what to do this? things my way. What is this cameraman? Doing After it this way on the game. 24 hours. The next stage of my plan is to oh, confront them with some home truths about their lifestyle. Right, okay. Portion control. True crime? You have whoppers. We like big Let's... meals, yes. Right. And you, Tanya, you're a crisper holic, babe. I know. Holic being the a bag of crisps thing. a day. <laughs> give, or take be, four. give or take a few. Holic a I've Yeah, I've done eight already today, yeah. If you want to remain a massive fatty, you will keep eating that. Imagine saying that to someone. Imagine saying that to anyone. Like, I'm gonna try and like empathize with this situation a little bit. Let's just say I had a baby trans near me who wanted to like have advice about hormones or whatever. I would never just turn around and say, and start a sentence with, well, listen here, you desperate tranny. Like never. Yes, you would. Gagged, gagged. At times it was like you guys were eating and weren't aware of it. Yes. It's like it was an unconscious process. Yes, was... which might be indicative of what? Yeah, I'll give you that, yeah. And I think that's got to be broken. Yes. How do you break you that? Because you're bored. Therapy. And there's a lack of active, what I call active interests and hobbies. Mm -hmm. If you were to sum up how you are at the moment, individually, how, what would you say? What would you say to me, Anne? I'm in a rut. I'm a lazy, fat cow. No energy, low self-esteem. Simply too fat to cope. Too fat to, to, to move forward. Big lazy, lost my motivation to work, do anything really. It's got to, it's got to change. Desperately. <laughs> well, I mean, that whole scenario wasn't great, let's just say that. But I do think there is something to be said for realising the problem. I don't necessarily think that shaming people into realising there's a problem is the best way. I mean, well, I know that it wouldn't work for me. Like, no amount of shaming myself and shaming me would make me want to make better decisions. I need to be encouraged. I say this all the time. You can't shout at flowers to make them grow. You have to give them all the nutrients, all the time, to give them everything they need to thrive. And if something's off, they rot. I do just want to interject here and apologise for constantly touching my hair throughout this entire video, but I'm using a new hair oil and I really don't think I like the way it feels. Oh, I don't know, I don't like it. That's why I'm constantly touching it, because there's a problem with it. Anybody else do that? Like, don't pick the scab. There's me going, oh, get it off, I hate it. Right, okay. I've told these lazy ladies what I've I think. i told to them the to be on lifetime, the game. They really need to understand the size of the problem. So the next part of my plan is to get them to take a long, hard look at their bodies on screen. It's not going to be pleasant viewing. Is he just going to shout lard at the end of that for no reason? Ooh, what's this? The Cinema. The need to realise exactly what their okay. lifestyle is doing Unflattering to their Unflattering angles time. I'll be using a tiny camera which lets the family see parts of themselves they've been in denial about for years. Right, why? Why would you do that? If you don't mind, I'm just going to no. unleash my beast. Right. So I need to... As far as you're comfortable. Yeah, no, oh. I'm comfortable. Because I want unleash you to my beast have a look. Something and else this to is me. probably, possibly for the first time, looking underneath. Yep. I've never stomach. seen underneath. I've just, it's enormous, absolutely enormous. This is shocking What's TV, What's caused isn't that, it? in your view, all that fat? Eating too much. I'll admit it, too much eating. I won't put it down to anything else than greedy, stuff in my face and overeating. I need to get rid of this. It is overeating, but I don't know if greed is the word I would use. 
Well, I mean, like, we can't psychoanalyze this woman just from watching her on a heavily produced reality TV show. We don't know her upbringing, we don't know her story, how she got to where she is. But during the time that this was filmed, the attitude towards weight was very much like, you're choosing this. This is completely a choice for you. And I don't necessarily think that's entirely true. Yes, it's true what you can put into your body, but like what's driving you to make those choices in your body? Sometimes out of control, like hormonal imbalances such as GLP cascades can cause all sorts of issues. Are we gonna melt this fat? Absolutely 100%, just let's see it shift. Can't wait. Okay, oh, right, well she seems a bit positive. Girl. She we seems quite resistant as well to this show I in need terms to make of like sure that Mum and Mike are on board too. You can't mistake like it, that it's color. fat. What's it's caused unbecoming that? Unbecoming colour. Laziness. Looks like it shouldn't be there. Almost alien, like. Okay, thanks. Why do we need that shot? Fatty foods. Fatty, fatty foods breed massive yeah. fatties, yeah. and that that's. Oh, the he truth. was itching. Did you see him itch to say that he was like. Stop it. Just want to cut down on him. He needs like a, I mean, we need to have like a squirt gun. Every time he has a compulsion to say massive fatty, we just have to squirt him. I'm soaked. What emotions are you feeling? True emotions as you look at it. I'm getting really upset. It's horrible. Confronting They're finally beginning to address their bodies from the outside. But what's going on inside? Right, okay. To find out, I've arranged a for the science to have a body MOT. The oh David my goodness me! I used to live near the London Met. Ah. Family to have a full the same body one MOT. The science Professor David McCarthy and his team will give them each a number of tests. Right. I need to establish how much of their oh, bodies the is egg. made up of fat and what health risks they face now and in the future. Okay. Oh dear. I'm nervous because oh, I don't like that. apparatus. Does look crazy. Get blood out. I don't know if that's a, a thing for big people. I'm worried about the different tests and the results, really, I suppose. Their blood will be tested and their body mass and metabolisms analysed using right. state-of-the-art equipment. Right. Right. Finished, but just stay on there for With the family's test... I must admit, I'm not a huge fan of the BMI method of measurement, shall we say. It's a very fast, very, very fast and quite inaccurate way of getting, like, a health picture about someone. But what we should, in fact, be doing is body fat percentage compositions. That's how we could really understand a lot more of, like, how a body functions. I have to deliver the cuffs some hard facts about their future okay, if like I'm going to motivate them at all. Oh, very Damien Professor Hurst. McCarthy is here to help them understand oh. the medical implications of their obesity. Right. And for Mike, who's already been diagnosed diabetic by his own doctor, okay. the news is not good. Okay. David. I just want you to explain to Mike the consequences of type 2 diabetes. If you don't do something about your type 2 diabetes right now, this can lead to some very, very serious How do we know that he's not doing something about it? So, for example, blindness. You can lose limbs, you can lose toes through amputation, mm. and you can have kidney failure and ultimately heart disease as well. So it's, it doesn't get more serious than this. Given the gravity of his condition, Mike's lifestyle has got to change fast. I do think that there is an obesity epidemic currently, especially in almost worldwide, in fact, but especially in the Western world. And I feel like companies aren't being held responsible for creating the most indulgent, can't say no to foods, like junk foods ever seen in history right now. And I do feel like that, alongside multiple other factors like epigenetics, hormone disruptors like plastic in the endocrine system, alongside the way we've even built our cities. I feel like these are multifaceted issues, but it's all still boiled down to, well, it's your fault, isn't it? You, the individual. Don't, yeah, you don't have to do all that. You don't have to go and get the Ma Maryland cookies. You don't have to, no. Regardless of the fact that their advert is so fucking delicious that my mouth is now watering thinking about a Maryland cookie and I know that I can just walk for like two seconds down the road and get them for like a pound and then absolutely ruin my mental health through consuming them. Should that even exist? Should a Maryland cookie even exist in this day and age when we know about the epidemic of health crisis? Is it the chicken or is it the egg? Well, what if the egg never existed? Stop inventing new ways for humans to become your cash cows. And unfortunately, Ooh, Anne's Hannibal results Lecter. are no more encouraging. You do have an abnormal liver. Oh. And there is fat infiltration 
on the liver, around the liver. If Anne does nothing in terms of her weight, what will happen? We're going to see scarring of the liver and um, liver failure, loss of function of the liver in long term. Do you know what's really fascinating about the liver? It is the only organ that can regenerate itself after like pretty extreme levels of damage. No other organ on the body can do that. And that has fatal consequences. And finally, Tanya. She's so big that she could barely fit in the bod pod. This special capsule measures the percentage of fat and water that your body is made up of. Okay. The interesting thing is you're not morbidly obese. Really? You are super morbidly obese. Okay. All oh, right, he lined her up there, didn't he? Lined her up, line them up, knock them down. Oh, for goodness sake. Did he really need to do that? No. I didn't think that was going to be good coming. <sighs> 19 stones of you is fat. That is equivalent to one and a half of me. It's a chronic um, condition that is going to shorten your life if you don't do something about it very, very soon. This is incredibly Amazing. serious. The Cuff's inactive lifestyle and overeating have caused massive external and internal damage to their bodies. Mm. It's easy. You will eat less, you will eat better, you will move more. Or you will stay fat and potentially die early. The cuffs have been dealt a devastating blow. I mean, as much as that is probably one of the harshest ways to deliver this information, that is the essence of what this show is about, isn't it? Like, fat families, can they turn it round? I do think saying, it's really easy, you just do this and you do that. Like, dealing with breaking, like, addiction cycles is not easy. However, if you stay the course, even tiny, tiny steps towards progress is still progress. And I think framing everything as like, it's easy. Why can't you do it? It's easy. It's not actually helpful to a lot of people. I feel like fundamentally, everyone knows you eat less, you weigh less. Like that's like, everyone knows this fundamentally. So saying it's easy is not actually that easy in practice. It's finding that willpower at 9 p.m. when you've had a really stressful day, everything's gone wrong in your life and your blood sugar perhaps is a bit low and your brain just goes, fill me up with ice cream, girls. I know you've got a tub nearby. Like it's that level of like, then willpower has to step in. And if there isn't anything extra that can help, such as brand new medical devices, brand new medicine on the markets to assist as a tool in that process, it's gonna be so easy to crumble at the last hurdle. So it's not that easy really, is it? Let's be honest. Oh, but how will it's they It's easy to say it's easy. Will they sing or swim? I think before this, Tanya had a sense of pride about being so fat and her and Mike really found fat people attractive. But I do think things are starting Why to change. Like She's beginning to realize there can be no more dodging salad for these folk. Salad. I've, made I've managed to like manage my weight without ever once being like, oh, I can only eat salad three times a day. One of the biggest problems for the cuffs is the enormity of their portion oh, size. Zoom in, so enormous. I'm going into this factory canteen and I'm going to sort it. Right, okay. Now, one of the reasons that you are so fat is because your portions are so huge. Right. So I've set up an exercise here where you'll be serving employees in the look. factory, their lunch, so you can get to understand what the right portion should be. Every day, this busy canteen okay, dishes right. up hundreds of meals. Why is the cuffs Spears are going paying? to serve up the portions they normally eat at home to see how the staff will react. Right, I see. Okay. Oh, I see. So they're, they're just being served the portion. The food is spilling off the plates. They just want curry and chips. I think maybe I have a bit of like food repulsion in my life because the idea of seeing like large amounts of food just like in one area really does something to me like mentally. I think maybe this is also a reason why I really can't deal with buffets. <laughs> I'm just like, no, this is overstimulating. I, I have to leave. <laughs> Chips, sir. There's plenty there for me. Cheers. Sure? Yeah, that's no, cool. Expensive. Oh, I wouldn't be able to manage it, thank you. You will. Yeah, I want to. Cheers. How many bits of garlic bread do you want? Two, three.
Just one would be great, just please. One. Yes, sure. please. I have a chat with Peter, the briefed. canteen manager, who looks a bit shocked by the vast amounts being handed out. Are you getting worried, Peter? Because you can see your food just going. Uh, I'm worried we'll run out of food. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried on the cost, but I'm worried we'll run out of food. There's extras if you want to come back. There are enough leftovers to feed mm. a small army. Oh, no, and the staff have their own opinion of the cuff's colossal plateful. No! So what do you think of your portions? I mean, you've left loads of food. Look at this one. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's about probably three times what you'd normally get. Was it, part, was it piled high, then? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Far too much. How many people would yours have served? Oh, I do love chips. Three? <laughs> <laughs> I do love some chips. Chippy, so what's chippy exactly tea? Team Cuff learnt after their dinner lady experience. Dinner lady, oh, their... the mad dinner lady of Devon. Yeah. There was a bit of waste. Yeah. I think there was some full stomachs, and they'd eaten half of it. But do they? Have... Okay, but I think also a lot of this is related to British culture, which is always very much finish everything that's on your plate, child, and that can very fast lead to like overeating. So in Wife Swap, I think particularly I've brought up this point, is where when we feed children, we have this idea of like, if they leave anything on the plate, it's a bad thing. Now, I don't have children. I don't have, uh, I don't ever plan to have children in my life. But if I were to have them, I would try and instill in my child from like a very early age, like really, really, really young, perhaps even, I don't know, toddlers? How old are toddlers? Like, to. <laughs> to stop eating when they're actually full. And I know that sounds easier in practice because, you know, children like to push buttons. They like to be a bit chaotic. Like, you know, children are just like tiny humans learning how to be like the worst kind of human you can imagine at that moment. Uh. That's what they do. That's what they're there for. And then suddenly around 10, they have a conscious awakening and they're like, oh my God, a human. This old post-war mentality towards food really needs to change. We do not need to finish everything on our plate. We do not need to have three solid massive meals a day. Like it's just not needed. What's really should be done is that like, I don't know, maybe like at your yearly health checkup, perhaps like a basic metabolic rate needs to be established for you and therefore a calorific requirement can be told to you specifically because 2,000 for a woman and 2,500 for a man is actually way too high compared to what the average public will need now. For context that number I believe was made in the 70s when jobs were a bit more shall we say physical and less about white collar jobs like office work or computer based work shall we say. Humans nowadays sit down more often than not. And unfortunately, the like consume consumption part of the food industry have not caught up with this. They're like, no, you need to eat 2000 calories a day. Actually, my basal metabolic rate is 1609. So if I ate 2000 calories a day and just carried on my life like I was doing, you know, didn't do anything special, didn't go on my nice long walks or anything like that, I would over time gain a lot of weight because 2000 calories is not what I need, even though the average, even though they say, oh, a day, they need this. No, they don't. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's journey is different. And this is never told to anyone ever until it's too late. That is one of the wonderful things about science is that we make recommendations from observation. And to make any recommendation from the observation, data needs to be provided. And if nobody's providing any data, there can be no information. There can be no recommendation. You don't know what you don't know, basically. Point out what you think is the ideal portion to be eating. Probably that one. Oh, well, then, I... But we would have had that one. Which one would you normally eat? This one? Oh, either that one or the, one of those two. See, there's yeah, a difference here. They know. This one. They know. So normally you'd eat Maybe this one. Maybe a little bit bigger, yeah. Maybe a little bit bigger with salad. There's a disconnect. But I would go for the second one with salad. And I think your mind needs to start to assimilate that program. It needs to become reprogrammed so that you do have number two as your natural portion size moving forward. Mm -hmm. okay. I wonder how the healthy Sensible. size portion will go down for lunch. Tanya, this is much smaller than what you'd normally eat. How are you feeling about it? It looks really lovely. I can't help thinking that I'm going to be satisfied after. I'm worried that I'm not going to be full or satisfied when I finish. And I want to go and seek something else to, to fill a void, fill that hole, really. You know, if you continue to have in the big portions you have, you will stay fat and get fatter. I'm going to keep that in mind. Keep that oh, in mind. Sure.
consideration, I guess, is that thing, isn't it? Uh, I've said before that I really don't like the phrase, everything in moderation. No, everything in consideration. Because humans are not infallible. We can all make mistakes and we can all allow ourselves that little bit of craziness, girls. Like, I know, for example, that I shouldn't eat a whole tub of ice cream, but I know also know that if I want to, I then have to consider where else I can get that deficit of calories from, you know? Oh, goodness me. I've got two days left with the family and their right. weight loss Two days well left, underway. girls! I've dealt with their cravings for those whopping portions, but what I now need to do is deal with their addiction for those whopping sofas. Okay. That's the first time we've ever heard the word the addiction. Are they addicted to sitting down? I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's a symptom. Sitting down is a symptom of a bigger problem. Much, but I'm going to change all that with a little game. Right. A you, game. your kids, I should say, have been waiting on you. Duck, duck, goose. Why aren't you making it to the planet? I think it's time that roles were reversed. Right. This is going to be a real test for Mike and Tanya. How are they going to cope with running around for their kids the way their kids have been running around for them? Why doesn't Tell everybody run around? Up you get. 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 I can do it. I'll do it. Oh, I don't like this sound. Up you get. Let's have a sit down, boys. Oh, she's already annoyed with that child. What? She's like, well, don't talk to me like that. Decision. I reckon you two guys... I've been doing good things for these two. You're so right, Jacob. So I think now... It's I also turn. like to talk like oh, this please. in the living room. To wait on you. Ben? Orange juice. Go on, drink some orange juice, in Ben. The fridge. Tanya's sheer size means that everyday household tasks are a real effort. But if she's going to fight the fat successfully, Do they need to... she has to What's start moving now. Like... Just climbing the stairs a few times a day will significantly increase the amount of exercise that Mike and Tanya that are doing. That is true, at the actually. I wish that my gym had a stairmaster in it because I'd love to build this booty, girls. But unfortunately, it doesn't. So eventually, I will join a gym that does. Dad, is there anything worse than a child Please, screaming? Nice, Jakey. Do you know oh, what I have to spin say? Spin it all over that man. I love my children to bits. I do love them. I totally, totally, 100% get the point. The point being... Oh, I thought she was going to be like, but they are going into the home. <laughs> These guys have been waiting on you too. Oh, he's loving long. it, isn't he? Very angry with Exactly. You guys Tanya are just really the like worst. It. Until she gets off the sofa, she is just never going to burn calories. And it's really simple. Eat less, move more. But until mm. I get that into her head, she is never going to move forward. She does have it in her head, though. That's the thing. My next this is why I feel like there's a disconnect here, because I had a problem a while back, shall we say, with a specific illicit substance. I know it was a problem. I know taking it was a problem. But my brain could not function by saying, this is a problem. I need to stop that. Until I hit a certain point in my life where I was like, oh... I need to now make changes. And that took time. It wasn't just someone coming in and shaming me. Make a child yell at me. Like, that didn't work, you know? Get them to start savouring the flavours of fresh food for the first time in years. Right. Fresh food. I'm throwing a blind taste test party. Right, here we go. Mm. Red melon. You know it's red melon? Mm. Yeah. Red melon? Oh, they're really sweet. They're What's lovely. Melon? Red? Do you like it? Mm. You can actually, instead of just chewing it and swallowing it, I can actually feel the seeds on the outside. I, oh, I hate strawberries. Better than bar chocolate. Yeah. Now I know they like the flavours, it's decision time. Okay, so we have not any flavour enough phobia. cakes and nibbles to throw a kid's... I actually have quite a lot of problems with food. I'm only just realising, like, I can't stand fruit. It's so acidic and bitter and awful. I really, I don't like it. Maybe I, I have more than just ADHD. Party every Party. week. So I've given we'll them a choice of two tables. One full of healthy snacks and the other laden with the processed stuff Later, they've been eating. To have any chance of losing weight, they need to start making better choices yes. now. Yeah. What do you I see will agree with that. here? That colourful. <laughs> that is. Is it volume that's more eating? Is that the latest? Yeah. Oh my life! Look at this. More inviting. That is. 
the kind of stuff that you guys have been grazing on per week. You, you see, though, it's all marketing. It's all like bright neon colours. It looks exciting. All the adverts around it are about people having lots of fun. And it's like the life and soul of the party. Like, oh, it's a treat. It's not really food. It's a snack. It's not a meal. It's a snack. It's a treat. Be treat wise. Treat yourself. No. Like, it's all that kind of language around foods like this. No one ever says, oh, treat yourself to a strawberry. Treat yourself to watermelon. No, it's all that like, treat yourself to a Cadbury. Yeah, perfect. Per week, Constant not per lunch. month, per week. That's the kind of stuff. And this is the stuff that I want to introduce moving Look forward. Oh, so man. which, which side man. are you drawn to? I want to be on that side. This side, I want to be this side. <laughs> right. I, okay. this side. I want to start now. That's the kind of stuff. At last, the penny seems to be dropping this and hopefully the pounds will follow. Right. I've got a question for you. What do you want to do with this? Put it in the bin. bin. That's quite food based though, isn't it? Okay. But is it even food? Oh dear, goodness me. <laughs> and a fight, a pub brawl. With the bad food binned, there's still a table full of goodies to be munched. I know just the people to help hoover it up. Come on, kids, it's party time. Hoover it time. up. Yeah. The children oh, hoover up food. Come on, this is your party. Not even nice, my little biscuit healthy, boy hoover food. food. But this is far better than eating the, the junk and the crisps and the no, chocolates okay. and the cakes. You know, still have the odd cake, it's not a problem, but not six a week. I mean, a sensible thing he said there, rather than just shaming them. Ah! Does he just constantly just be like, is one oh, of the here's a treadmill. As well as Mike's favourite big boy lounger, something he regularly spent eight hours oh, a day like loafing a love in. Couch, isn't it? Love, love seat. And placed in there. Ah, oh, changing rooms could never. Shiny new treadmill. Ah, oh, pink curtains. I'm not sure what they're going to make of this new look. <laughs> Very changeable. Oh. Hooray, Dragon is open. What is that? It's the end of. No. Oh, my oh, bloody hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on in, kids. I bet that's quite oh, a pricey this. item as well. This is a bit fab, isn't it? As then. you can tell, I've left you one sofa. That's yeah. fine. Uh, but I have taken your swirly chair. So godly. And I've taken the other sofa. In this room. The family's Florida right, okay. holiday is just 10 weeks away. And with one day in a theme park... I will say, though, yeah, in theme parks, you, there is a lot of walking. It's actually exhausting to go to theme parks. Like, thinking about it now, I'm just like... Especially as I'm quite a, like a white-knuckle girl. I love to race to the front, run around, do all that. It's like, it's actually quite tiring. The Biscuit Child, are you here? You want to sit on my lap whilst I watch this show? Come on, then. Let me shimmy you around. Shimmy your bum bums. There you go. You can sit there if you're nice. Or are you tired? Have you been sleeping? Very good. That. And with one day in a theme park equivalent to a six mile walk, they will need to be a lot fitter. Get your big bum moving! <laughs> one day is equivalent to six mile walk. <laughs> After I leave today, I'll Two be keeping an eye on their every move, state-of-the-art tracking devices oh. and high-tech activity monitors. And as both. Not all. If you look up there, there's a camera. Uh, I will be able to see exactly what you're up to 24-7. So if you're sitting on that sofa, doing nothing, can't be bothered, full uh, of the excuses, chair. I will see it. It's about getting off the sofa, moving your body, taking some responsibility, getting on with it, thinking before you eat. There's only one thing we're all interested in. Okay. That is a reason. This is also how politicians should be speaking to food manufacturers. <laughs> Take some responsibility. It's that time for me to result. say goodbye to this family for now and wish them luck for the weeks ahead. Okay, right. I am completely exhausted. And those guys in there, they're probably really pleased to see the back of me, to be honest. But in working Well, you are self aware. We love a self aware queen. Lose at least two stone. I want to see Tanya lose at least three stone whilst we're working together. Okay. But to do that, they've got to get their backsides off the sofa and they've really got to cut down on these big, fat, massive portions. Oh. Back in Telford with the cuffs and things are off to a flying Unusual start. shaped house. This is day five. Now the exercise on the treadmill. Chaos. Da -da. Da -da. Absolutely. 
Is that, is that a racist song? I have not heard it is. Away, to be honest. What's up, baby biscuit I'm boy? thrilled to see the family racking up the miles on the treadmill. They've right. started to fill up with veg, not junk, and they're going to the gym. Okay. I've Cute. been following their progress on the CCTV I had installed. Right, yes. And I've been in touch by webcam. Have you? Oh, I was going to say, have you been watching that on your man? I don't think so. They're losing three pounds a week and are bang on top. Okay, target. three pounds a week is a sensible weight loss. Not extreme. Until the end of the program. God, right. Da 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 da. Three weeks later and something's amiss. Oh no. Mike's progress has slowed down to zero oh, and dear. Tanya has lost one solitary pound. Oh, I sense the, the initial excitement off. is wearing off. The attraction of that one remaining sofa is just too tempting. Time for some tough talking. Okay. We've got to have a heart to heart and we've got to be open with each other. Frank discussion. What's happening? What's the tea, sis? Just, I don't know. I wish I knew because we have been brilliant. Well, it's evident from my data that you're actually not doing the exercise because your target is to do one hour's uh, exercise a day and you're doing, on average, 38 minutes. No. Steve, see, now that just makes me really angry all over again. It's impossible not to lose weight if you are eating less and moving more. OK, so while I don't really agree with the way that this is being done, now what we're seeing is a, a level of... I'm going to use the word here, a level of delusion, maybe not delusion, but like rejection of, oh, I don't know, rejection, not rejection of truth. That doesn't, maybe that is that a little bit, actually. It's that idea of like, I'm being attacked now. So instead of listening to how you're going to say it, I'm going to switch into defensive mode, which again goes back to one of my favorite sayings, which is you can't shout at flowers to make them grow. Shaming people is not encouragement. Maybe that you think you're having 2000 calories, but the, what are the portions like? Have I here got two people that are re that really want to lose weight? Because the results at the moment no, are, are, are appalling. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> kiss my Because <laughs> I've worked my <laughs> I'm on that Because <laughs> I'm agony. You can kiss my <laughs> I'll tell you. Because I'm, I'm, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> she just said piss, 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 piss. I don't care if Tanya was angry with me. She can turn that anger into determination. And let's face it, the first few weeks hard, of though. changing your lifestyle are always the most difficult. I know I was quite hard on Tanya in that internet chat, but she will thank me when she starts internet losing that chat. weight. Chatting on the internet. Well, that's the cuffs to meet me on the internet. Over the next five weeks, the that's cuffs get down to business. Five kilograms. There are highs and lows, but their commitment to my programme is immense. <laughs> i tell you what we haven't seen so far in this episode. We've still got a few minutes left. The lard tower, which is nice, because what did they do with all that lard once they kicked it over? Once the lady kicked it over, what did they do with that? Did they just let it melt in the car park? Or did someone have to scrape the lard? Ugh. Can they hit the targets I've set in time for their final weigh-in? Can you? Can you do all that? Eggs. Oh, God, right, okay. It's ten this? weeks since I first yeah, met the cubs, and we're almost yeah, at the end of our journey together. Da, 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 da. The heart of glass. I've sent them to a top London salon for a makeover that will oh, complete oh, their new look and Nikki lifestyle. Hamilton Jones is in there. Their hair, makeup and clothes will all be restyled. Makeup? Oh, I hope they put him in drag. Why don't you try on that lovely wig? I'm keeping the family apart till the end of the day. Oh! Yes, and your aunt. The swan. You're a very brave man. Oh, what a horrible yeah, I think cut. Those are a nice pair. I like the bow on them, though. Lovely. Right. I should go down. Sure. Little heels. I head down to the salon to meet the family as they finish their makeovers. Oh. First up is Tanya, who, when we first met, could right. barely walk around a local supermarket. OK. So oh, was this the reveal? Oh. Oh, oh she's got a bit of sequin. <laughs> Dressed a little bit like a magician, yeah. but it's fine. Very nervous. Uh, uh, if you're not seeing yourself yet. No, no, I am so nervous. Get off. Are you really? Yes. What, I are, you am. Doing what are you nervous about? To if you grab me like this, I'd be like, get off. Tanya, this is your reveal. This is your life. Oh, I like the lip colour. Oh, also the flicks in the hair. Look at me. Babe, I love it. Oh, it's nice to see her eyes light up. There? I do look, I've got a waist. I look slimmer. <laughs> I do look slimmer. I am wearing a bra again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a first for me in God knows how many years. Yeah. Her eyes um, have definitely like, lit up with this week. 
to do one of my own shoelaces up. I sat on the chair, bent that, I couldn't breathe. Everything was pushed up. Eyeballs popping out in the head, but I did that shoelace up. <laughs> Next through the door oh, is Mike. That's actually Just really over two nice months to ago, he was told that his expanding waistline was linked with his diabetes. Ex oh, yeah, expand. It's a very to different man who's standing in front of me now. <laughs> oh, it's giving How Canary Wharf a little bit. Right. Yeah. Not sure about that. So I like the pink tie, actually. Take a look at yourself, a bit of verb. Oh! How do you feel? New person. Oh! <laughs> See, the host like here, Steve, is being really nice to them, but I just know that in the narration, that you've needs to be like, in the last couple of months. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. What's the wig? What's the tea? Definitely dinner. And one of the things that was... Um, they could have given him a nice you, wig. Your diabetes. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there any update on that? Well, when it first started, I think it levels up around the 19.6 or something like that. Uh huh. Um, went the, the other week and it was down to 7.2. You've done so well. Was that cholesterol? I've been given a new lease of life. Oh. You've done well. And then. that's why we want to make better quality of life choices for ourselves. And isn't finally, it? Anne. Taking all the shame and everything like away, like this show is not really healthy for people that are trying to manage their weight. But that's what we want at the end of it, isn't it? Anyone who undergoes a, a weight management journey wants to have a better quality of life. And we can't blame people for that, can we? Who was so worried about her health, Anne. she believed an early exit was on the cards. You look gorgeous. Oh, no. Why, why did I let like my hair? Oh, no. Oh, she looks like a Tory MP. Oh, my Lord. Hey, can I look thin? <laughs> hey. I've got a lost ten stone. Because the clothes told me I have. Do you think working with me over the last ten weeks has made you he think about changing really life close? for the long haul? I'd be like, This is no going back. back. This is, I want to see my great-grandchildren. There you go. Okay, when that, I first that's met this driving up. There was stuff in their faces full of junk. Right, Tanya was a Christaholic like and Anne was eating herself to despair. Now this family have thrown out their massive fatty mindset and adopted my mantra of eat less and move more. I think in a weird way I'm sort of becoming almost numb to the phrase massive fatty. With real enthusiasm. Okay. I've kept them apart all day, but now they're reunited. Yeah. You know, Absolutely fabulous. You really look absolutely fabulous. You got a suit on, mate. The hairstyle yeah. makeovers are a Ladies little are bit gorgeous. easy After jet holiday to Benidorm, and, and I don't know why. The family's final I wouldn't have given them these hairstyles. First on the scales is Anne, who 10 weeks ago weighed 22 stone. You now weigh. 20 stones exactly. Okay. <laughs> Not only has Anne hit her target weight loss of two stone, she's also lost an incredible six inches purpose. from her waistline. Wow, six she inches. can now look forward to an active, fitter future oh. with her grandchildren. MIA paper planes. Next to step forward is Mike, who weighed in at 24 stone. Right. Now weigh exactly 22 stones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Again, of two yeah. stones. Oh! This what? Welsh dragon has burned the fat from his body. Mike's also off. reduced his blood sugar levels by 13 points. Blood and has sugar, his diabetes sorry. under yeah, control not, at not last. Cholesterol. And finally, Tanya, who was a massive 33 stone. Has she lost that What's three stone? Music? The target I set for her? Tanya, you now weigh. 29 stones, 7 pounds. Oh, wow. Yes. So this was weak. Oh, I've got me no stones. I'm three and a half. That is a three and a half. I've got a three stones. Three and a half. Well, that's, it's that's amazing. You know, Tanya that's the goal that she wants to hit. all my expectations and shifted a mammoth She's 49 pounds. She's mammoth, don't say mammoth. I think a lot of what's important to remember within like a weight loss journey is not to just constantly focus on the big final goal. You have to allow yourself to enjoy the little goals along the way. Also shrunk two dress sizes. Two dress Between sizes. them, the cuffs have melted a colossal seven and a half stone. Wow. I'm thrilled to bits. I didn't want to let anyone down. I said three stone and I've been so worried. And um, I got... <laughs> And you That's did just it. really amazing.
And you must be really proud of your daughter. Oh, I'm just over the moon. Absolutely over the moon. I've got to admit, when I first met you just over two months ago, I was a little bit sceptical. Oh. I was wrong. OK, I Seven thought it was going to be quite... Seven and a half stones of fat has gone in this family. It's very visceral with the way he explains it, isn't it? two months. That deserves a glass of champagne. Does it? This family is on its way to a healthier, fitter lifestyle. Okay. If they keep to my simple plan of eat less and move more, the sky's the limit. Did they go to Orlando? It's been a roller coaster ride for the cusp. Ah, yeah, really yeah, right, okay, the oh, universal. Their achievement has been fantastic. And most of all, what I really like is they did it as a family. Okay. Oh, well, there we go. I guess we did end on a positive note. Well, I just would like to let you know, my lovelies, that I would never have gone on this show had they approached me during my beginning, before I even started my weight loss journey. Let's talk about some things that we've seen today, shall we? First of all, I feel like this episode, in contrast to the one that we saw last time, was slightly different in the way that he approached the situation. This episode, canonically in the timeline is before the last episode. I found this episode less shocking in the way- well, did I find it less shocking? I feel like it was less shocking than the first episode that we watched. In terms of how Steve spoke about the family through narration. He did like to use a lot of insults still. I do feel like sometimes the way that he enunciates words specifically gives me the ick and I kind of go like, oh, I don't really want that, no. However, in saying that, I do feel like he was slightly, slightly nicer when it came to actually allowing the family to understand that they've hit their little goals along the way. I do wonder if they eventually went to Orlando. I don't know if maybe that was like a storyline for this episode of like, tell us something that you'd like to do. Because you, you know, people can't just want to go on a weight management journey for themselves, can they? I feel like this video is gonna be a long one, my lovely. So I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode, because utterly bonkers start to finish. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here. Yes, you can. We actually have a bunch of brand new Patreons here on the Chanel, my lovelies. I wanna say a massive hello and welcome to Unicorn Tulip, Stressica, Love that. Miranda Bryant, David Kirkham, your average goblin, Rebecca Cross, May Danger, The Happy Stitcher, Lenore, Lisa Anthifer, Fuzz Freak, Steve, and Misha Moreno Cooland, my lovelies. Welcome to the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over on Patreon. If you would like to join, check the link in the description box below. Today's Instagram shout out goes to that magic mutt. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram, you stunning woman on the go. If you want to be in with the chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you go and follow me over on Instagram. It is xxluxaria. The QR code is on the screen right now. And over there, I post my travel and fashion content. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to the top tier Patreons. Or Cosmoji, Ariadia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finch Dunham, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Lenore, Les Banana, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, Novembrix, Paola Rivera, Rye Loves Rory, Stefutex, Steve, Taylor Martin, and Vicky Walsh. And you know what, my lovelies? I think I'm gonna leave it on the note of always remember that if you have a massive goal that you're moving towards, even tiny little steps of progress is progress. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Ugh.